right, welcome to Real Estate First Technology, a new episode for you all. I'm the main host, I'm Will the Third. We have our co-host, Mr. Dan Gandy. Welcome, Dan. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. As always, I heard Dan's allergies aren't doing so great over there. Oregon. <laughs> Uh, all, all the fallen, all the fallen. So before we go ahead and introduce who we have today, just want to go ahead and encourage everyone to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and then comment below with what you learned. Because today we have someone from California come with us and he is what's next when it comes to the way he's approaching technology and video and his social media is exactly what we're seeing for the millennial agents and beyond. So for agents out there, you're going to want to listen up. For consumers out there, you follow Bill yourself. That's who our guest is. And tell us what you think about what he's doing. So we have. Yeah, no, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, of course, man. And we want to deep dive into like, you know, how you got to where you're at today. And that's what the show is all about. So like, let's start off from the beginning. Like how long you been in the business? Why real estate? Yeah. So um, I've been in the business for about 12 years now. So I started uh, 2010, uh, basically when the market was all the way tanked and it crashed. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like I was selling houses. They were probably a hundred thousand dollars making a thousand dollar commissions if I was lucky on some of them. And damn, so that, that's kind of where I started. And uh, I was, uh, you know, bringing it back further. Like I, I got into car sales. Um, so like, that's where I was, you know, I, I've been in sales. I've been, you know, I, I've been 1099. I don't think I've ever received any W2s uh, my entire life. So wow. it's wow. A, basically just all commission sales based. Um, you know, I just like to kind of control my own income. And so have a lot of sales experience and selling all kinds of different products and uh, you know, the reason why I got into real estate, I might, you know, I thought, you know, especially after selling cars, I was trying to open up my own dealership and, okay, uh, you know, it was more so of like, why sell, you know, something, why not sell the, the biggest uh, thing you can and make the biggest commission check you can. It's all the, it's all the same process and mm -hmm. just learning, learning a new product. I love that. Longer, but it's worth it. Yeah, for sure, man. That that's awesome. I actually sold cars myself as well for three and a half years and thought I was going to own a mechanic shop. So right there with you, man, that, that, that's awesome. So then yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to do. Right. I mean, <laughs> I, I went to, I went to school for uh, mechanic school and I saw everybody with hurt backs and broken backs. I was like, that's not what I want to be, but you know, why get paid $30 an hour when the dealerships are, you know, charging a hundred dollars an hour. And yep. I was like, I want to be the $70 an hour guy, not the small little $20 an hour guy. So, yeah. I love it. 100%. Yeah, I saw my dad do it. My uncle do it. And from racing cars, a quarter midgets to like being in the pits, I get it. It's like, that's more of a fun thing than like, let me break my back and not be able to like live long and prosper over time. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So, so just get into like when you first started. So when you first started, anyone who's listening and want to maybe follow in your footsteps, maybe they already look up to you. Maybe they're already someone that follows you currently. Uh, give us some context between like, how did you get started? Did you start making calls? Did you door knock? Like, were you already on social media? It sounds like in 2010, you didn't have social media opportunity at that point. So how did you get your business off the ground and start uh, bringing in business? Yeah. So I started off as a solo agent. I, um, you know, being in the East Bay, I mean, we got so many different kind of areas and I was like, why not, you know, try to sell the most expensive houses that I can if I'm going to sell this thing. So yeah. I tried to go into the luxury market right off the bat and joined the office and realized that was not, you know, easy and it was very niche. And, <laughs> and I went door knocking and handed out flyers every day and, you know, got a lot of exercise. I, I used to go door knocking, you know, selling ACE tickets back in the day, you know, a long time. So awesome. I was used to it. Um, I just wasn't seeing results. And so there's no structure. Um, so I joined a team um, and I was basically on a team for almost nine years. So oh, wow. I had to really kind of learn, you know, all the way from the bottom, you know, being a buyer's agent and learning all the way to the top and ended up kind of managing the team and training all the agents and, um, you know, just kind of learning the ropes, you know, what to do, what not to do uh, to grow this business. Had an awesome mentor, I think, which, which was huge. And you know, got leads and, um, you know, learned, learned the business. So I think at the beginning was more so like, it was just appointments and, you know, yeah. working hard. And that, you know, that's one thing that you don't see a lot of agents doing anymore. Yeah, definitely. No, I understand. And it's easy to look so good on social media and it's just like, wait, 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 
you look good online, but let's check out your production and see what you're really doing. So you uh, really, you really talked about uh, something that like you just, I want to mention this real quick is that you put the time in the trenches and a lot of agents try to like, Oh, I'm just not going to do any trench work. I'm just going to go straight to luxury and showing, you know, multi-million dollar houses. And I think uh, just word to be known that like that effort, that time, your experience is irreplaceable. Mm-hmm. That's why you get more deals than most people. Yeah. I mean, I'm running in, you know, so now, you know, we have a team over 40 agents and, you know, so now I'm training a lot of them and, you know, I'm running into everybody, everybody wants to work where they, you know, where they live in the same cities. And I was like, it doesn't work that way. Like go, go where the business is like travel, you know, like drive an hour, drive, you know, hour and a half, like go where the bit, like get that experience going, make some money. And then obviously, yeah, that's when you start marketing and branding yourself for where you want to work and start working that angle. But everybody wants a shortcut and there's no shortcuts in life. Nope. No. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, exactly. You got to do what you got to do. And then you get the luxury to do what you want to do. So I love that. So I got a couple last questions before we switch up to the mix up round for Dan. And so from like being a solo agent to now having 40 people on your team, which was going to be the, the last question I was going to ask, which is perfect. is very fitting. What does that look like? So like, are you still in production? Are you just serving your team? Is it a both? Like, how does that day in the life looks like? Yeah. So, I mean, I started, well, because I, I learned so much, you know, I got to, you know, learn what to do and what not to do, you know, starting the team. Yeah. So, you know, because I was on a team for nine years and started, you know, all the way at the bottom, I got to kind of see, I got to see where agents heads are at and what, you know, what an agent likes to do and what we don't like to do. And so that's kind of how I built the team. And basically, you know, I know what we're going to say we're going to do and what we're not going to do. So I, I kind of yeah. started hiring and adding, you know, the pieces. And that's when I, uh, yeah, I started with three agents um, within the first year. Uh, you know, we I think we grew to like, I don't know, seven, eight agents. The second year we grew to 15. Wow. Um, and then we just switched over to EXP uh, last June. So less than a year ago, and we've grown all the way to 40 agents. So, wow. um, you know, that it's the day in the life now. I've, uh, I, I've gotten out of sales. I haven't showed a house in forever. So I, I do take on listings, you know, if I get them and, you know, I'm like, yeah, I can take that if it's easy enough, but it does take a lot of my time. And so I do give out, I would say 90% of my business um, out and I'll just, you know, if you look at my transactions, like my stats are probably horrible. You know, but, so uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a luxury though. Right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's uh you know, I don't, I don't work weekends. And so I definitely, you know, have the flexibility of, you know, spinning, you know, baseball with my my kid and stuff and that's awesome uh, I, get, I get to do what i want and uh we still produce crazy numbers right now and so i'm i'm in the trenches now building and growing the team the back end of it like i'm this is where i'm at now zooms right now i got the setup wow. i got the lights i you know so it's yeah, yeah. You know, training and coaching uh the the team and get them rolling hiring and firing and um the operational side of things wow that's super cool. So I can imagine someone listening right now that like, all right, got to get in the trenches, you know, go where the business is at to then have the luxury to be able to do and be more flexible and then potentially grow a team and then be where you're at, where it doesn't matter about your numbers. And also with EXP, not a, you know, plug for them, but shameless plug for them. Their model is great. So you can have that downline and be able to see return and residual income from your past efforts of hiring and firing and going through that process. I actually love that. That's great. Well, I'm going to yeah. go ahead and, uh, and switch it up. I was going to ask a tech question, but I'm going to give it to Dan for the mix up round and go ahead and get into the tech behind the team and how you guys do all the things. Yeah, for sure. Now that we kind of know your team structure, like, you know, what, uh, what technology are you guys leaning on in order to scale? CRMs, productivity, operations, marketing? Um, I think one thing that I got really, really good at, it's not really, I mean, it is techie. Um, you know, it's the new the new age is I got really good at training. Um, so hiring and training and um, basically, you know, creating lists of everything that we need to do that, you know, we shouldn't be doing as far as agents and hiring for those things. So, you know, leveraging, you know, all the virtual uh, assistants. So I have... Um, I think that's probably my best way of growth right now is hiring uh, virtual assistants using, uh, you know, I use Upwork. You know, I know that they got headhunters out there, but I got really good at, you know, fishing out, you know, who's going to be good, who's going to have talent, um, you know, making people jump through a lot of hoops and going through a lot of interviews. And um, so I think right now we probably have eight admins, uh, virtual assistants, and 
Wow. Um, actually about nice. to start hiring a couple W twos, um, some in-house ISAs. So, um, that's what I just did. So I think that's, yeah, the virtual assistance is, is definitely been huge, uh, to be able to grow. So, you know, I got director of operations that are overseas that people are like, what, like, like through the salaries that I pay versus, you know, I probably pay, you know, I got like seven, eight admins right now and, you know, all working full time for our team every single week probably paid, you know, five, $6,000 a month for it. Wow. You know, and having that many full-time ad, you know, assistants. So it's, it's leveraging, leveraging. And then plus having, you know, the technology, like, you know, we got Chime. Um, I partnered up with Curator. Um, I've been with them for a couple of years. So, um, you know, I got those systems rolling, a lot of automations um, happening. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it's good, man. That's uh. And in terms of the video, like, uh, how do you keep focused on what you're going to shoot, what you're doing, planning that out and just keeping up with it? Um, so I keep it simple with that. So, I mean, as far as, you know, like uh, I use Trello, uh, Trello is like, you know, I'll just like when I'm listening to podcasts or I'm, uh, I have an idea or I see something, I, I just make sure to like put it down to make sure like when I go do videos, like I know to, um, I know to shoot something. I have the content right there. And I, I just, all I need are questions. So like, I just want to answer questions. So like I repeat the question and answer it. Um, and so like, that's kind of how I just make my content. I can't do scripts. Um, you know, like I have, so now I've worked building out a media team. Um, so I'm trying to basically duplicate what I do because I'm doing less, you know, the marketing side of it. So I'm trying to get them to do and replace me. So I could have, you know, 40 agents doing the same kind of marketing I'm doing. So um, now we got a couple of editors. Um, I got videographers. I have, um, you know, a social media manager. Uh, you know, we got, yeah, so we're building out that whole section of it. So um, now I'm, you know, I, I barely am in my Facebook. Like I probably, you know, if you message me on Facebook, it's not even me responding. So it's, you know, like I, I have a lot of help and, um, but that takes time. You know, it's training. The training is the hardest part that a lot of people don't, can't go through. You know, it's, you know, if I know if I'm going to hire her for something, it's spending time. Like I heard one thing one time, it's like, you're going to spend time now to save time later. So, you know, I'm, I'll, I know it will probably take two to three months to train somebody, but after, you know, four months, five months in, like now I don't have to do anything, any of that anymore. A long-term vision, man. That's, that's what really makes you a good entrepreneur is understanding that that investment is going to pay off and that return on investment is in the short term sucks bandwidth, time, scheduling, systems, but in the long term, it's profitability, lower labor cost, efficiency, scale. And so yeah, definitely the goal now is just trying to get the agents to, you know, get their brand out there and get their, you know, get their content. So now, you know, I set up media days, you know, I, you know, twice a month, once a month, I get them out there and we'll put together some scripts and I just make sure I get everybody to uh, create a bunch of videos and so like we'll and then we'd polish them up and we'll post it for them and run ads for them um, so that's kind of like an all-inclusive deal wow. love it love it well back to back to norman definitely a couple of things to unpack there i love the fact that you're putting together we like to talk about like sops like standard operating procedures key performance indicators and you just have the income producing activities so that's basically what you focus on and i love that you put together those systems and processes and and, and someone who's listening is probably like oh my god how do i even get started like there's so much to do or you're doing so much and uh that's awesome people don't really think about like the vas and the opportunities there and um, and the posting and whatnot, and having the help behind this the behind the scenes from the perspective of what you guys offer at your team is great. So if there's any agents out there that's interested, check out uh, Bill's information down below. You might want to reach out to him, and you never know. Are you recruiting? You're looking for more team members? Always <laughs> looking for talent. Okay, okay, okay. So getting into that, a couple of questions I have before we'll basically have the end of the show, and we'll just leave the floor open to you and anything you want to leave for our viewers and listeners, like what's the goal by the end of the year? How many team members do you want to have? Um, I'm trying to hit a hundred. Um, so okay. I want to, I want a hundred agents. Um, I mean, we just pushed, um, and we're, we're probably about a hundred, uh, sold and pending right now currently. So, um, I wanted 500, so we're, we're pushing. Um, so I know that nice. we're, we're starting to get rolling right now. And so that's kind of, yeah, that's the goal. It's a hundred. That's awesome. With the shift to the market, inventory starting to become more readily available. It should be able to be definitely something that you could do for sure. That's awesome. And then as far as like uh, 
talk about video. I know there's a lot of agents out there that want to get into video. And um, something I just kind of struck a chord for me is, is that like getting your agents to do video, right. And like that video content, like, like, how do you, how do you get them to wrap their head around it? Cause you said like, you listen to things and you find something that strikes a chord and then you just say the question, answer it yourself in the video. Like, are you, are you saying like, Hey, shoot like area specific videos or buyer specific or seller specific videos? Like, how do you approach this for anyone who's listening out there that maybe could take some tips from you who wants to start getting into filming their own videos and maybe don't have the eye or the ear that you have as a, as a entrepreneur that's proactive. Yeah. I think, you know, if you're, if you've been in the business and you've closed some deals, you have enough experience to, is you just have to like, think about that camera of being a person. Right. And so like, um, you know, one marketing tactic is, you know, like I always uh, start off with the question. So that question needs to be relevant. I, I hate having all that vanilla stuff out there. Like I did that like two years ago and everybody, you know, now it's kind of, they use that as a tactic to start doing videos and like, Hey, what is an FHA loan? Well, FHA, like nobody cares about that stuff. Like, so I, I kind of, I tell them like, let's talk about relevant stuff. Like what are, you know, what did you just run into right now? That was a situation. Boom. Like answer that on the camera and make it sound like you just talked to somebody um, on the other side. And another thing is just act like you're talking to one person, you know, don't say like, Hey guys, you know, it's more of like, you're just talking to like, there's only one person on the other side of that screen that's watching mm. you. You're not talking to an entire group. Um, you know, the eye contact, you know, making sure your, your eyes are looking at the camera and not at the screen, you know, so a lot <laughs> yeah. of little things like that. But I think, you know, so one thing that we're, we've been, cause now we've been pushing a lot of these agents, not pushing, but we're trying to help them, right. And try to build their brand and get them to be uh, comfortable making videos. And basically it's not making videos, it's, brand, it's getting their brand out there, getting people to know yeah. who they are and like, why, you know, why are people, why would somebody reach out to you and like ask you for help, you know, to buy or sell a house? And um, that's, you know, the approach that I'm going with it. It's not like do video, video, video. It's like, nobody wants to do video to start. It's mm -hmm. more so like, how are you going to get people out there? Like we just showed, you know, I was kind of going over my uh, ads today with my team. Um, so we got every Wednesday, we go live on Facebook um, and I do a, 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 you know, basically agent jumpstart branding and marketing. So that's something that I have on my Facebook page every Wednesday at 10. Um, but basically, like I showed them, like, you know, I have one agent that wanted to do mailers and it was going to cost him a dollar a house, basically. And he was going to be able to reach like 200 something doors for 250. Or um, when I showed him, I was like, look, it's only costing me, you know, four cents per uh, through play, you know, 15 second. Somebody watched me for 15 seconds and it only cost me four cents. And I reached, you know, I, I looked at uh, one of my ads, I spent like $500 and I got like, 14,000 through plays. Yeah. Right? Wow. Like it's like, you can't match that with a mailer. And like, so here's another thing too. Oh. So uh, I'll kind of spin off a little bit because uh, we just went over this, but yeah. I see a lot of people and I'm getting a lot of, uh, you know, uh, reactions to this because everybody's like reels, 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 organic, organic. Re it's like, dude, like that's the long approach when you could do a shortcut to this where the, the, the reels and the organic reach is not how you're going to grow fast. Like, cause hmm. you're not able to control who you're reaching, right? Yeah. You might get a bunch of views, but it could be from people all over the United States that aren't even thinking about buying. It could be young people, could be, right? So running ads and, you know, using that ad manager and using it to your advantage is you're, you're structuring who you want to have that, you know, reach and you could reach, you know, so many more people for so little price, right? And like, that's one thing that I'm, you know, I've been really pushing my agents like yeah create the reels like, it's cool i think just agents are like watching other agents and they kind of get a little big head and they, they have that competitive yep. feel it's like no we're we're focused on consumers like focus on consumer content and like just think about what your consumers think of you and not how another agent's going to think of you it's almost kind of becoming more of a uh, like a high school you know like a competition right who's the coolest kid in school yeah. I mean, you know, I think a lot of these agents, you know, it's like, look at their production. Are they actually closing deals, though? Like they might make cool reels, but are they making money? And, um, you know, just because the algorithm, right, the algorithm, it, it shows, you know, they're going to show it all the other realtors in our area because we're realtors. Yeah. So I think that's where a lot of realtors, they get FOMO because they see all these realtors making all these videos. And I'm like, your friends and family have never seen any of these realtors videos in their life. Like yep. you see it. So like stop caring about that and just focus on like what you're trying to get them to see you on, you know? And so I think, um, and you know, starting small, you know, another thing is, is start small. Like 
I tell my agents like do 10 second videos. You don't need to do a minute, like start, you know, maybe mm. if it's seven seconds, just start off with that. Make a couple seven second videos and now work your way up. Now you got a couple of 15 second videos. Now you got a couple of 30 second videos. Now you got experience, you got more confidence. Now you can work your way up and now you can just talk on them. Like scripts, I feel don't work that well um, just because yeah. you don't sound natural. Um, so when somebody meets you in person, you're not going to be the same person on that video. Hey, let me pull out my phone so I can talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Grab my script real quick. <laughs> let me, yeah, let me, hold on. Yeah. So yeah. no, that's all good information, man. I, I try to tell everybody if you're not, if you're not uh, promoting and, and getting in front of at least 20 to 30,000 people in your local market a month, like you're missing out on a huge opportunity. I see people spend money on marketing on who knows what, a million different things. And, and I, I, I've been preaching, I showed Norman my Facebook page the other day and I was like 30 to 40,000 people a month. They see my face, they see my brand, they see what I'm doing and yeah. that's you just got to do it. I remember Dan, we were, uh, so we just went up to Oregon for a trip and uh, Dan got a phone call. Guy saw him on YouTube. Hey man, I wanted to potentially get an investment property up in your area in Eugene, Oregon, saw your YouTube video, thought you're the guy to talk to. Brain doctor. YouTube, YouTube, actually is, in your market. YouTube has been killing it actually for me, but it's taken, you know, two years. And that's what people don't understand. It's like, it's taken me a year, two years of like consistently putting content out there on YouTube and running ads behind the, the content. Cause I don't get any organic reach. I don't, you know, I, that's one thing. It's like, um, it's that, it, you know, it, it's like a, a lottery, right? Like you put out one video and I'm like, Oh, did that work? It's like, Nope. You know, so yeah. you have to put money behind everything and YouTube yeah, it just like just like Facebook, Instagram, like it takes like I would tell my agents, but like just know everything that you're gonna do right now, you're not gonna get any calls for like six months or a year right now. Yeah, that so sets the tone. Yeah, yeah. So or, no, so. I love that. I love that. I gotta say, I love the fact that you said it's just like you're speaking to one person. You're not speaking to multiple people. And I like the idea of like, if you do get a hitter, then you can see, okay, maybe I should put some money behind it because it did hit. And maybe that could be something that organically can grab some attention as well. So I absolutely love that. Well, we're going to go ahead and change up the mix up, change up the, uh, the camera angle. You want to have all of our viewers and listeners take from today's episode. So go ahead and take it away. And uh, what do you want to leave with everyone? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing for uh, everybody out there, one thing that I learned this past year uh, stop thinking small, you know, stop thinking small and think big. Like you don't know what you want until you get there. And then, you know, you might want something else once you get there. And so it's just like, so yeah, true. just man, think big, man. Like shit. I always wanted, you know, I always said my, I didn't want a team. You know, I, I told myself I, I never wanted a team. I was making, you know, a good amount of money as a solo, you know, on an agent on a team and I was good. And I was like, but I kept hitting a plateau and I got to that point. I was like, well, what's next? Right. And then now the what's next was like, okay, well now I want a, a small team. I want a Navy SEAL team. And then <laughs> I started, I started doing that and we started killing it. And I was like, well, what's next? Right. And now here we are, we're, you know, got a goal of a hundred agents and I don't know how much further. So I think, uh, you know, don't, don't think too far out. Right. Until, or, you know, yeah, think big, man. Wow. That's so, that's so true. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to shoot for the stars and you hit the moon, whatever, at least, at least, at least you got there, you know? And I feel like yeah, it's so true, uh, Bill, as well, because when you do get to that certain threshold and you make more money, there's always a trip you could take or a nicer car you can have or a bigger house you could have or more people you can help or what more, you know, philanthropy, whatever. So I 100% agree, man. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Yeah. This is great to have you on and be able to get behind the brand. And I think for viewers and listeners out there, it's that's our intention is to like go deeper with you. So that way they can understand who is Bill, what is he up to, what is he doing? And I think this gives people out there a whole completely different perspective. They don't know you personally, they're not on your team to be mm -hmm. like, wow, like this guy's crushing it. And we already knew it. And that's why we wanted to have you on that. So thanks so much for being on. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, no, it's fun. Of course, yeah, of course. Dan, as always, thanks so much for being co-host. Always, man. Great to meet you, man. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. And thanks to all our viewers and listeners, as it is our intention for you to take things from our episodes. So apply to your business and have more massive success. Now down below, what did you learn? 
follow Bill, check him out. He's absolutely crushing it and we will. Thank you for watching Real Estate vs. Technology, this week's brand new episode and making it to the end, your real one. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified for new episodes that come out every single week on Fridays at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. Also, if you comment on this episode and you like the episode, you'll help this episode get out to more individuals. And if you want to join our Facebook group page, just click a link. It's a Facebook icon on our profile page here on our YouTube channel. Join our group page, network with individuals all across the world, and share what technology you're using to grow your business. The next link is to join our Real Estate vs. Technology brand new IG or Instagram page. If you go on any of our stories, you can see who's going to be on Real Estate vs. Technology before it actually goes live on our YouTube channel. And the last link would be if you want to be on an episode of Real Estate vs. Technology. You pick a date and a time, we'll deep dive into your story and technology you're using to share that with other individuals that view our episodes weekly to inspire, enlighten, show up, and show out for people that love to watch these type of podcasts to have more success in their own business. Thank you so much for your continued support. We appreciate it. We will see you on the next one.